Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining joining us for our lunch and learn on winterizing faucets and your irrigation system. Um, we're gonna get go ahead and get started right at twelve. Um, so before we get started on the actual presentation, just a few of the housekeeping guidelines and some things with housekeeping. We've all done a million of these virtual programs now, but just a couple of reminders. Um, please make sure that you've got yourself on mute so that you're not, we're not picking up your sound and going over and everybody else can hear what's going on. You'll also see at the bottom of your screen, there should be a chat box and a chat option. We've got the wonderful Chrissy behind the scenes doing the teching for this program, but if you've got any questions, feel free to type those in the chat box at any point in time. If you're having any issues, like if you can't hear me or suddenly you can't see us, you can certainly type that into the chat box and Chrissy will try to troubleshoot that from our end and make sure that everything's going okay on our end. Again, we're gonna have some time at the end to answer some questions, but as we're going through the slides and as we're talking about some of the things, if something pops into your head, so you don't have to remember it until the very end, go ahead and type that question in the chat box and we'll get to that at the end, but that way you won't forget what your question was. And also I'll have my email at the end that if you think of something later, then you can certainly send me an email and I'll get back to you and, and answer your questions that way. So we're gonna be talking today about what happens when winter hits. I've heard that it's going to be an absolutely terrible, brutal winter and very, very cold. And then of course, last week I heard, oh, well, that was not actually the case. It's not gonna be that bad of a winter. But as we all know here in Georgia, our winters are all over the place. And it can be, even in the same winter, we can have you know 80 degrees most of the winter. And then all of a sudden we've got a cold snap where it's down into single digits sometimes. So thinking about winterizing your house and winterizing your faucets and your irrigation may not seem like a very important topic, but it definitely can have some dire consequences if we do have one of those cold snaps and you're not ready for it. So that's what we're gonna walk through today and talk about some, some things that you can do and some things like what you can do as a homeowner and just as an individual and what you can do that maybe you might, might need to get some professional help, a professional plumber in and get them to help out with some things. So what exactly are we gonna be talking about today? So we're gonna be talking about how do frozen pipes affect me? So what happens when those pipes freeze? What's the benefits of doing this? And we're also gonna be talking about winterizing your home. And like I said, some of those things that you can do that are everyday things, everyday practices that you can do and what do you need to be doing? What can you do? What are some things that you might need to get a professional to come in and do? Some areas of concern. What are those places in your homes that you need to be paying particular attention to and that you need to be focusing on that are the higher at risk areas of freezing. Outdoor faucets, what do you need to do about those outdoor faucets to make sure that those don't freeze whenever the temperatures drop? Your irrigation system. If you've got an irrigation system, what do you need to be doing at the beginning of winter and do you need to do anything with it? What do you need to do to after you winterize it? What, what does that process look like? What does that mean? Good morning, no water. What happens if you wake up in the morning and you suddenly have no water because we had one of those cold snaps and maybe you had been meaning to get around to winterizing your home and doing some of these steps and you just hadn't gotten there. What do you then need to do? What does that look like? Vacation time. It is a different process if you are going on vacation. And like I said, we know that some of these, we're in Georgia, and so sometimes it is a process of overnight it will we don't know the snow's coming we don't know the cold weather is coming sometimes it just all of a sudden it's here and it's like oh we weren't expecting that so what happens if you're out of town and you're can't come home to check on your house what do you need to do before you go away on vacation to make sure you don't end up with a birth pipe and then some time for some questions so like i said if you have those questions at any point in time during the presentation, please feel free to type those in the chat box and we'll get to those at the end and make sure we have some time to answer those questions you might have. All right, so 
how does water affect me? I mean, how do those frozen pipes affect me? Elementary science class, we learned that when water freezes, it expands. I know I may or may not have had a, a water bottle explode in the car or those Coke cans explode in the car whenever the temperature gets really cold and they freeze or you put a water bottle in the freezer and you forget about it and you go back in and it's expanded and it splits the water bottle and the Coke cans exploded or the water bottles exploded. Well, in your pipes and your fixtures, the same thing can happen. When the water in those pipes and fixtures freezes, it's going to expand. And what happens is that your plumbing and your pipes do not expand, just like that Coke can or that water bottle. Your pipes and your fixtures do not expand when the water expands and it will burst and it you get a crack and it explodes and that's never an enjoyable moment when that happens. So it's just exactly like those water bottles and those Coke cans that it can cause lots of damage to your plumbing if that water inside your inside your pipe does freeze. So there are three main common reasons that you're gonna have a burst pipe. One of them is taking a long vacation and not winterizing your home properly before you leave. Like I said, of that cold snap, frequently we get snow and we get cold snaps that that the weathermen or everybody says, oh, we had no idea that was gonna happen. It's just the nature of the beast around here. So people will go away from home and the weather forecast for the week that they're gone might say that it's gonna be nice. And then all of a sudden towards the end of their trip, the weather changes and they have no way to go back and take care of their house or they have to cut their trip short. So that's a common reason for a burst pipe in this area and around here. Oh, sorry about that. The second one is forgetting to winterize your outdoor water lines. So like your irrigation system, um, your outdoor faucets, pools that are outside, things like that of forgetting to, out, to winterize those outside faucets. The in your house, the from the meter into your house and everything in your house is actually your responsibility. It is not the water system responsibility. So all of those outdoor lines and even the line, the water line running from your meter into your house is your responsibility. If you are up north somewhere, then a lot of times they will bury that pipe, that water line that's coming into your house, they'll bury it below the freeze line. But typically around here, we don't, the plumbers don't do that. And it's not when they build your house, it's not buried very deep. And it's not, it's buried to where it can still freeze that line can. So that's, we're going to talk a little bit about that too, about making sure that you, the practices that you put into place help keep that line from freezing as well. So if the ground freezes, then that pipe can freeze as well. And the last one is ignoring your pipes in hidden and hard to reach areas. That's things like the crawl spaces, your unfinished basement, the attic, underneath your front porch even. A lot of people in this area have got raised front porches or they've got the, like, the porch is kind of on the second level and you have to walk up to it. And you might have pipes that go to outdoor faucets underneath that and ignoring those in the areas that aren't heated. So if you've got an attic, you're not, you don't usually have a heating system there. If you've got an unfinished basement, you're not heating that unfinished basement, which makes it even colder. And a lot of times people, because it's inside the house, will ignore those areas, but not thinking, well, it might be inside the house, but it's not heated. So it definitely will stay colder. So those burst pipes, if any of these happen, those burst pipes, as you can see, I mean, it depends how much it costs you to get it fixed, depends on what needs to be done. Sometimes you need to get new, like you've got to replace the pipe or you've got to replace a pipe in a difficult to access area, like in a small crawl space under your house or in the attic, that plumber that's coming in to replace that, it's going to charge you more to get into those hard to reach areas and replace those than if say they don't have to replace any pipes or it's just a really simple fix. Like everything else, the harder they have to work and the longer they have to work, it's gonna cost you more money. So it can run anywhere from, you know, $100, $150 upwards, depending on how much work you need to thousands of dollars if you've got that burst pipe. I mean, it can be things like having to get your whole entire floor replaced. Like if you have a burst pipe and it floods your house, you might have to get those 
floors replaced and pull them up. So it's not just necessarily plumbing. So it might not just be the plumbing fixtures. If you've got water that gets into your walls and they end up molding, you're gonna have to get all of that replaced and you're gonna have to get the drywall, the drywall replaced. So it's a much bigger problem of repairing a burst pipe sometimes than just repairing burst pipe. It's definitely an expands beyond just the plumbing and just that one pipe. So by winterizing your home and taking care of some of these steps we're gonna talk about, it will very easily save you some money and save you all of the headache and the problems that you might have. It can protect your, your household from potential illnesses like that previous picture. If you've got mold in your walls from a burst pipe, Sometimes you might not know that that mold is there, or you might not be able to get to the mold easily. And we all know that mold in your house is not a good thing and the illnesses and the problems that it can cause. So by taking care of this and preventing the burst pipe, then you can certainly help with that problem as well. And it saves your local utility from wasting resources and manpower. We don't have to come out and with the meter and deal with problems with that, then it's gonna save us time and money as well. So some very, very simple steps in this area, typically burst pipes can be stopped from just winterizing your home and doing some very, very simple things that are most of them you can do yourself or you can get a family member to do to help you out with. Some of them might take a couple of people, but it can be some really easy steps. A lot of times the our houses are can be drafty, especially around the windows and doors in the wintertime. And what that does is if it gets cold enough in that house, then our pipes aren't warm enough and it can lead to that frozen pipe. So just by doing some simple things of weatherproofing any cracks and crevices in your home, checking those windows and those doors, even if, if it's like with caulking or with the weather tape that you can just put around the door to help seal it in, that'll also help to help save you money on your heating bill if you're not having to heat your house because you've got, a, you've got the drafts coming in. In some older homes, you might need to do a little bit more um, extensive work on that. Like if you've got cracks in a board in an attic, like I was saying that those unheated areas, like the attic and the basement, if you've got some draftier spaces in those areas, putting some caulking in the cracks in those boards to make sure it's not leaking through the plastic weather seal over the window that you could have the hair dryer to that helps to seal in those windows. Those can be really useful in helping to keep your house warmer too. It's really, it says down there, check for leaks best during harsh weather. The reason that I said that is that it's really easy of that if it's windy outside and it's cold outside, if you put your hand up to a window or a crack or you're just like feeling around on the um, around some of the spaces in your house, you'll be able to feel that breeze coming in. I know we've got a couple of drafty windows at my house that we have to put the weatherproofing around the edge every winter. And if you can, you can feel the wind coming through that crack in the window and around the edge of the window with some of those older windows. So it's, it's easier to do it that instead of just waiting till a nice pretty day and you're not gonna be able to feel that coming through. So sometimes it still gets cold out there. And like I said, uh, typically, some of these simple things of weatherizing your home, you've got no problems with around here. That will take care of it. But for those super duper cold days, when the temperature outside does drop below 32 degrees, so we've got, especially if it's dropping for an extended length of time overnight, the next day, and we've had we can have anywhere from you know one night that it's going to be below freezing to a week that the temperature day or night doesn't get above freezing so the weather's just crazy but when it does get below freezing one of the easiest things that you can do is just drip your faucet so you want to have a mixture if you're dripping your faucet if it gets below 32 degrees you want to have it a mixture of hot water and cold water that helps keep the water flowing through those pipes. And remember how I was talking earlier about that pipe from the meter to your house? If you've got water sitting in that pipe, even overnight when it drops below freezing, there's a chance that that pipe can, can burst and start leaking as well. And that's gonna be a lot harder one for you to find 
because it's outside and you're not going to see it. So what this does by dripping your faucet, it helps you to keep that water flowing through that pipe, especially. So keep that water flowing through there. It's not going to freeze. It's not going to burst. You don't want a strong stream of water coming out. You're not going to open the faucets up and let them run full blast. Just a drip, drip, drip kind of thing. And you don't have to do every faucet. Think about the furthest faucet from the fixture, where the water comes in. So the water leaves the meter, comes into your house somewhere, and then it runs, all the pipes run through your house. I think about it of what's the last place in your house to get hot water. So if you think about it that way, like we've got my bathroom upstairs takes forever to get hot water in. Other bathrooms downstairs, they don't take as long. So it's probably running through that. But so think about where's the last place to get hot water. That's probably the farthest place from where the water comes in. So you're going to want to drip that faucet and maybe a couple of other ones throughout the house, just so it keeps flowing through all of the through all of the house. Now, yes, we practice water efficiency and saving water and water conservation and don't waste water. So now we're telling you to drip your faucets. Yes, because you are going to waste a whole lot more water and a whole lot more money by having a burst pipe than you are by just dripping your faucet overnight or dripping your faucet during the day. And you can also, if you want to save that water, which please, I encourage you to do so, you can use that water and water your plants. Stick a bucket, stick a cup, stick a, a watering can underneath that faucet that you've got dripping and you've now got water saved to go water your plant with. Or you can water your pet, uh, get, pour that water that you just dripped overnight, pour it into your pet's watering bowl. And if you have anything like my cat and you've got a cat who likes to drink out of the faucet, they're going to think you're the greatest thing ever because you just left the faucet dripping for them. So collect that water for their water bowls and give, give them a little, a little winter treat that they get to drink out of the faucet that day. Mine loves to do that. So that's one of the simplest, easiest ways to save a pipe on those cold nights. If you're at home, drip that faucet a little bit, keep that water flowing through your pipes. Another thing you can do is open up those cabinets, those underneath the sinks. You don't really need to go to this extent of opening up the cabinets over like with your dishes in it. There's not really any pipes running in there, but where underneath your sink, open up those cabinets. That helps to get the, the water, I mean the air, the hot air to go in and helps to keep those pipes warm, especially if it's backing up to an exterior wall. Underneath those cabinets can be colder than the rest of the house. And when it drops to those extreme temperatures, it can actually freeze those pipes underneath your, underneath your sink. And you want to make sure you keep your heater above 55 degrees. That's kind of the magic number. Even if you're going out of town, that helps to keep it a little bit warmer. Don't turn your heater off completely. Keep it going. Keep that heat going. It helps to keep the house warm and keep the pipes from freezing. So those pipes that are going to freeze are most likely to occur in the areas, like I said earlier, that are unheated. So those attic, basements, crawl spaces, in your garage, under your kitchen and bathroom cabinets, and fixtures and pipes that are attached to outside walls. Now, out of those, the main areas of concern that you want to focus on and that are really your concerning areas are those first two. So the attic, basements, and crawl spaces. Typically, those are not heated. They're outside even sometimes, especially those crawl spaces. They might be completely open to the outside element. So those areas and your garages, unless you've got a finished heated garage, but mine's not, it can get really, really cold out there. So you want to make sure you're paying attention to those first two spaces. Now, a really easy, simple way to do, thing that you can do at home is to insulate any exposed pipes. So in those attics, in that garage, in the um, crawl spaces, if you can get in there, this foam, that, that the picture right there, very easy to use. You just take it, you cut it to the right length, you cut it down the side, and then you just wrap it around the pipe. And you can even put some zip ties in there if you want to, to help seal, help close the gap where you cut it, as well as hold it onto the pipe. This is really, really important, especially for copper pipes. If you've got copper piping, the copper pipe gets colder. Some people have PVC pipe, 
but the copper pipe gets older and is more prone to freezing and splitting and bursting pipe. And you can look, the pipe that you see here is copper pipe. You can look at your pipe and be able to tell what kind of plumbing you have and what pipes are being used. So those, this insulation is very, very important, especially on those copper pipes in particular, but on all of your pipes to help keep them from freezing. And this is something that's really simple. You can find these at home improvement stores. Very easy to use, very simple to do, very easy, quick fix. You want to make sure that you especially pay attention, like I was saying, in those attics and those crawl spaces, those unheated. If you look at the space that looks like probably underneath the house, the basement, it's got a little bit different insulation. That's another type of insulation that you can use. It's more like the insulation that you have in your attic. So you want to make sure that you're wearing, you're going into places that do have this insulation, that you're wearing long sleeves and you're wearing proper clothes and making sure that you're keeping yourself safe as well. Another area of concern that you can do as a homeowner is your hot water heater. So it's great to invest in what's called a hot water heater blanket or hot water heater insulation. It's insulation that just wraps around, basically it's a blanket, that wraps around your hot water heater. And again, this is something that you as a homeowner can, can make sure that you do yourself and take care of. You just wrap it around your hot water heater, cut it to the right length, put some duct tape, duct tape this to duct tape it together, duct tape the seal. And then if you have an electric hot water heater, you can even like duct tape it to the top to cover the top part of it. If you have a gas hot water heater, do not cover the top of it. Now the trick here is that you want to make sure that you keep everything uncovered that needs to be uncovered. You don't just cover up the whole thing and call it a day because if you've got a gas hot water heater, you got to make sure that intake, the air intake is left open. And the overflow valve, like in this picture, you want to make sure that that's not covered up as well with the insulation. But it is something you have to be a little careful with it. Make sure you're cutting little holes out for the different things that are coming out of it, the different parts of the hot water heater that need to be uncovered. Or you can just take insulation and throw it in there in the middle and just keep it covered up all the way. No, don't do that. Please don't do that. That's just asking for problems and dangerous if you just throw the insulation in there. Like I said, the other one, nice and pretty. This one, it's even got zip ties around it. That works fine too. If you use the duct tape, it can seal up that, that uh, crease, the gap in there. And so it covers it up really nicely. And this is not only gonna help your hot water heater to keep it warm and keep it from freezing, but it'll also save you money on heating your hot water heater because it's gonna keep it warmer I know our hot water heater at my house is in our garage, which is unfinished and cold. And so it always takes longer in the mornings in the wintertime. We have to turn the hot water heater up every single winter to be able to make sure we have hot water because otherwise the water is too cold and it's not heating it up fast enough. Get a blanket, fix the problem. So we don't have to turn the hot water heater up and waste that gas and electricity to extra heating the hot water anymore. So another area of concern that we talked about is our outside faucet. Your outside faucet is outside, obviously, and it has got, sometimes you leave your hose out there, hooked up out there the whole winter. First thing you need to do for that outside faucet is to unhook your hose. And the reason for that is that hose can actually freeze and split too. So we're just trying to save you some time, save you some money come spring when you need that hose again. So unhook the hose. Wind it up, make sure you drain it good, and put it away for the winter time. And that'll help save the lifetime of that, the lifespan on that hose as well. Now, you want to cover that spigot outside. You, it's really, really simple to cover it. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. You can go to the store, and there's a couple, you can see some examples of ways to cover it. They've got plastic bags or like thick plastic bags that you can put over it and it will seal around the spigot. They've got hard covers that it's got a little loop on the inside of it that you hook to the faucet and then you just, it's kind of like on uh, drawstrings that you can just drawstring it closed and it, it seals it up really, really well. You can even do something as simple as wrapping plastic bags around and then like duct taping it closed and then putting cardboard over it. What that does is it helps keep, keeps it a little bit warmer, but it also helps keep the frost off of the actual faucet. Because when you've got the frost there, it will help to make it even colder than just the cold temperatures. So it helps keep that frost off of it as well. 
some places have got the pipes that are outside running to the outside faucet. So if you think about like a raised, if you've got an outside faucet and you've got a raised porch, that pipe might come underneath that porch to your outside faucet. And sometimes if you look at the far left picture here, the first picture, you'll see it's got an outside shutoff valve. So sometimes they do have the outside shutoff valves that just go to the outside faucet. Sometimes you don't have that. Sometimes you can't find that. Sometimes you just got one shutoff valve for the whole house. Obviously, if you've got one shutoff valve for the whole house, you can't do this. We don't want you shutting off the water to your whole entire house if you're still at home. So you would shut off the water to the outside faucet, go back over to the faucet, turn the faucet on, and what that does is that then drains all of the water that would be left in that pipe. So you turn the faucet on, let all the water drain, turn the faucet back off because that helps to close it off to keep the cold air out from in the pipe. And then they will usually have a plug on that outside spigot. If it's going to an outside spigot, that's the um, shutoff valve. You would just pull the plug and that helps to drain from that end. So if you've got the pipe, you're draining all the water from this end but it may not be perfectly slanted to that end. So the plug will drain any water that's slanting and back over here. So that outside pipe is then completely protected with no water in it and won't freeze and burst. So if you've got that set up, that's a great system to do because you're not usually, typically you're not using those outside faucets in the winter time. So just shut them off. Don't worry about them. Wait until springtime to go back out and turn that water back on. Now, if your irrigation system Nobody with an irrigation system. Irrigation systems are not cheap. They are not simple fixes that are just, you know, everybody can do. Nobody wants to see this happen with their irrigation system exploding like this of freezing and there's water in the irrigation systems. And you go out one morning after a cold freeze and this is what your yard looks like. That to me just <laughs> that's terrifying. There's no way that you want to be able to see that. I don't want that to happen to anybody. Again, we are not using our irrigation systems in the wintertime. There's no reason, especially around here. Typically, we get enough rain all winter that no matter what you've got going on in your yard, you're not going to need that irrigation system. Irrigation systems are also typically run with PVC pipe. And while that copper piping gets colder, that PVC pipe, the PVC piping is really, really easy to crack. I mean, it is, if you think about it, if you've ever felt PVC pipe or copper pipe, the copper pipes are pretty hard. They might get colder, but those PVC pipes, they're pretty, they're not super strong like those copper pipes are. So they freeze, they're very, very easy to crack and break. And because of your irrigation system, a lot of times you're not gonna know that it happened. If you're not running it, you might not know that it happened. It's outside, it's not flooding your house. So unless it looks like this when you come out in the morning, you might not know that that irrigation system is hot at all. So what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to do an irrigation system blowout. Now this is something that typically you cannot do yourself because it's a very methodical, very systematic process that has to happen of turning off your irrigation system, draining the irrigation system, section by section, zone by zone, and making sure that you're draining and then closing off each zone. And then what the irrigation professionals will do is they will actually come in and they will blow out the water line and they'll blow out the irrigation system line. So it's like, if you think about, like if you have a straw, like a reusable straw and you clean it out, sometimes there's still a little bit of water left in there. And if you blow on that straw, all of that extra water that's left in there will come out. That's basically what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing with their irrigation system. They've got machines that will blow out all of the water. So there's not water left in those pipes so that when it gets cold and it freezes and the ground freezes, because those pipes typically are not buried very deep in the ground. So it doesn't take much to get them cold and to freeze them. That extra water that's just sitting in those pipes is not going to breathe and burst that pipe. And again, even if you just shut off your irrigation system, you're not going to know that that pipe bursts. And you're not, that water is still going to be sitting in those irrigation systems. 
and you're not going to know that you've got a problem with it until springtime when you go to turn it on or until it's not working the next time you try to use it because you're not using it over winter time. So you, this is something that needs to be done by a certified irrigation specialist. We look at those with the irrigation, irrigation association. If they've taken the certification classes through the irrigation association and have got their, their certifications with that, those are great professionals to do that. You don't want your cousin who has an irrigation system and knows what he's doing. This is definitely something that can get screwed up and cost you lots and lots of money to take care of. So a lot of times what will happen is in the next morning or the next, not the next morning, the next spring, you go to use your irrigation system and this is what happens because you didn't know it burst, you didn't know something cracked, you didn't know a pipe cracked, and now you've got to go in and figure out where the problem is and get that fixed. So before you turn that irrigation system on back in the spring, if you've gotten it blown out and turned off all winter, before you turn it back on, have a spring irrigation assessment done by a certified irrigation specialist. So they can come in and they can make sure that you don't have any broken parts, you didn't have any pipes cracked, none of your sprinkler heads were, were broken or knocked off in the winter time. And so you're not gonna be wasting water. And a lot of times this happens, our irrigation systems run when we're asleep and we're not paying attention or when we're away from home. So you don't ever see this happen. And so you don't get it fixed. So you don't wanna be wasting water for weeks and not realizing it. So here's one of the hardest problems of good morning, no water. What do you do? How do you know that you have a frozen pipe? How do you identify that if you might have a frozen pipe? Well, it takes a couple of factors. One of the factors being it's got to be the right temperature. If it's not below freezing, you're not going to have a frozen pipe. If it's 80 degrees outside, you're not going to have a frozen pipe. So it's got to be that cold temperature and freezing outside is the first, is the first criteria. Second one usually is that if you turn on your water and you have no water coming out or you've got a tiny little trickle or a couple of drops coming out and it's been below freezing, you very well might have a frozen pipe. The other thing, if you can look around and you can see some of your pipes, if it's got frost on it like this picture, then it might be, that's probably a frozen pipe. Now, a lot of people will say, you know, well, you can just thaw it yourself. But the first thing that you need to do before you do anything, if this happens to you and you think that you've got a frozen pipe, one of the things you need to learn how to do is how to turn the water off at your meter. So you find that meter and you turn that water off at the meter because you don't want it backing up. So if the pipe bursts, then you've got free flowing water. If you turn the water off at the meter, you can figure out and we can get identified where the piping is and you can get a plumber out to figure out where it, where it is and you're not gonna have that pipe burst and then just have water free for all. Now, if you don't know where your water meter is and you don't know how to turn it off or, or you are uncomfortable doing this, you can call the water system and we will actually come out and we have special code to put in the computer for the system that it's a frozen pipe, go out and turn the water off. It's no charge to you. We will come out and turn the water off and then you can, this next step, call a plumber to figure out where the water is. A lot of times people will say, well, you can figure it out and you can figure out where the pipe is and you can get the hair dryer out and thaw it out. Yeah, you can, but the problem is that that might not be the only place it's frozen. If you've got another pipe frozen somewhere else, that's not gonna fix it. It might be like, if I don't wanna be crawling underneath my house in this situation, finding the frozen pipe to fix it. And then the pipe might already be burst. And so if you, if you just thaw it out, you might have water everywhere because that pipe's gonna burst. And the plumber can come out, identify where the frozen pipe is, fix it, make sure it's properly fixed. And in the long run, we'll save you time and money and hopefully parts of your house too. So that's your step, turn it off immediately. First thing you do, turn it off at the meter. If, if you can't do that, call us and then call a plumber. And usually they'll, they'll ask you to wait till the pipes thaw, but if you've got They'll, they should come out pretty quickly to be able to take care of that. So, vacation time! You're headed out of town for a couple of weeks for Christmas, for the holidays, for New Year's, for any February break even around here if you've got kids in school. So, 
we've got vacation time and you're leaving your house, we do not want you coming home to this because you just ran out. These pictures are horrifying. So, so you left everything normal and we had one of those sudden crazy cold snaps and you had a, and it froze and then, well, it burst the pipe and then it thawed because the weather, the weather warms up two days later and you've had water running out of that burst pipe the whole entire week that you've been gone. And then it freezes again. So now your whole entire living room is frozen. <laughs> Terrible, horrible. So what can you do to make sure this doesn't happen or to help this make sure it doesn't happen? If you're going to be gone over the winter time for any extended length of time, or even for a few days, that meter that we were talking about turning off at the meter, that's what you need to do. If you need to go out to that meter and you need to turn your water off at the meter and go ahead and, and turn that off. And then that will stop the water from flowing into your house, but you still got water in your pipes. So you need to go and you need to drain all, turn on all of your faucets and drain all of the water out of those faucets. So that drains all the water out of your system. So you're not having that water sitting in your pipes waiting. Make sure you turn off your faucet though. Turn it on, drain it, turn it off. Make sure you don't drop that temperature in your house below that 55 degrees. Keep the heater on. I know sometimes we're tempted to save the money on the gas or electric bill, but when you do that, if it drops to teens or single digits, your house is gonna be the same temperature. So keep those heaters running. And then you can also turn off, if you have an electric hot water heater, you can turn off that electric hot water heater and that can help save that from freezing. And because like I said, if they're out in the garage or somewhere where it's not heated, clearly it's water, it's in a space, it can freeze. So you can actually turn that off and drain that as well. If you've got a gas hot water heater, you wanna contact your gas provider and see what they recommend because a lot of times the gas, the pilot light will keep going and it will crank it up to keep it hot. And so it won't freeze. So it'll, it'll do that. So you want to contact your gas provider to, to determine what you need to do. But if you've got that hot water heater blanket on, it's definitely going to help keep it warm as well. So if you're, again, if you're out and you're going to be leaving for a while, turn that water off at the meter, drain those, drain all of your faucets, Make sure that that water is turned off. And then when you get back, turn the water on. You might have to let the water inside your house run for a little bit because sometimes you'll get sediment in the pipe that'll settle. And so it might not be perfect. So you let it run for a few minutes, get it back to good, pristine water again. And, but it will definitely save you a ton of time and a ton of money if we happen to have one of those crazy freak cold spells that we get sometimes. And, You've got water sitting in your pipes and it freezes. We do not want that to happen to anybody. So if you've got any questions, make sure you type those into the chat box. But also, I know that we covered a lot and you might not remember all of this and remember what the heck we're talking about. So we actually have a fact sheet on our website and Chrissy's going to drop the link into the chat box. So you don't have to write this down, this link down or anything. She's dropping into the chat box the link that is actually to the, the fact sheet that's on the screen right now that is at home plumbing system best practices. So it goes over a little bit about some of the things that we covered today about freezing weather, what you need to do in freezing weather, the steps to it, what are some of the key points that you want to make sure that you cover and the things that you want to do. Um, also, like, what do you do? What do you do when you're going when you're leaving for an extended time? When you're going on vacation? Oh, what was I supposed to do? Did I do I want to turn that? What do I do again? This fact sheet will help you remember those steps and help go over that with you. And again, if you don't remember, you can certainly contact me, and we can we'll go over that. But yeah, this great great resource to print out even and just keep around to help you remember every winter. Because again, it's one of those things that if you only do it once a year and you only focus on it once a year, then you might forget about it. That insulation, you do need to check it. Like maybe check it once a year because it's just like anything else. It can deteriorate and it can break down. And so over time you will have to replace that insulation. But again, that's the simplest way. The insulation, making sure you're keeping those, those places, those pipes, warm and cozy 
and so they're not breathing. So that's some of the great, great tips that you've got. And again, if you don't remember some of this stuff, that's my email address that you are welcome to email me and ask any other questions that you might have. And let's see, do we have any questions? And looks like we don't have any questions yet. So we'll, we'll, if you do come up with a question and you think about it later, or you forget something, you're like, what was it you said about this? Then feel free to email me and go, and I will certainly get right back to you on that. And that's also our website. Um, you can find lots of resources on our website for all kinds of conserving water, protecting water resources. We also do regular service projects that you can sign up for through this. And we do monthly lunch and learns that we definitely encourage you. Different topics every month um, that cover a wide variety of topics and discuss discussions that are going on. So we welcome you and, and invite you to join those in the future as well. This recording is going to be on our YouTube channel. That's the YouTube channel is Cobb Water System, Cobb County Water System. Um, and you can go on and you can check out this one in case you do want to look back at it to refresh your memory on some things. And you can also look at our past lunch and learns that we've done to learn the things with that. So, but we really, really appreciate you coming and thank you very much for giving me your lunch break and your lunch time. And I hope that you enjoy it and learn some things today. And I hope that you'll join us next month for our next lunch and learn. But thank you again and have a great day.